In this first example, um, a quality control inspector has determined that 8% of the batteries manufactured are defective. Find the probabilities if a sample of 50 batteries is selected. First of all, we can tell that this is a binomial probability. I've got a consistent probability of a success. So this is going to be P, my probability of a success, which is 0 0.08. I also have a very clear outcome, whether it's going to be a success, which would be defective, and a outcome of a failure, which in this case is kind of counterintuitive, but a failure would be not defective. So this would be um, a success. We have a clear number of trials. So N is equal to 50, and each of those trials are independent. Um, as we continue to go through here, we've got N, we've got P. Let's go ahead and put Q up here as well. Q would be the probability of a failure, which would be not defective. That's going to be 1 minus 0 0.08. So Q is going to be 0.92. Those are going to allow us to apply our probability formula. Let's go ahead and start with an example, though. So for number one, I'm going to do an at most example first because I think they're a little bit easier. And then we'll do an at least example. So let's do the probability that at most, let's say at most two are defective. So that would be the probability that either zero out of that 50, I could have zero that are defective, one or two are defective. This is an or, so it's gonna break down into cases of the probability of zero plus the probability of one plus the probability of two, all using our binomial probability formula. Here comes the formula. The probability of X successes is equal to N choose X the probability of a success to the number of successes, so that would be x, times the probability of a failure, which is q, to the number of failures. If there are x successes, the rest of, the, of them, n minus x, are going to be failures. So I'm going to go ahead and use this formula. If I put this together for each of the three probabilities that I've got, that's going to be 50 choose 0, and then I've got 0 0.08 to the 0. 0.92, all of them are failures to the 50. Plus one is gonna be 50, choose one, I'm choosing one success now, one defective battery. That's gonna be 0 0.08 to the first power. That's a one to the first power. And then 0.92, that leaves me with 49 failures or non-defective. And then finally 50, choose two, 0 0.08 to the second power. And then 0.92, that leaves me with 48 that are not defective. Now I could type this all into my calculator exactly like I've got it, but I'm gonna choose not to because I would rather use the binomial cumulative probability distribution function on my calculator, um, more fondly known as binome CDF. It lives in the distribution menu. Let's go ahead and grab my calculator here. I'm going to clear that. I'm going to go into the distribution menu. So second distribution right there above the VARS. And I'm going to go ahead and arrow down until I get to that binomial CDF. One too far. Okay, there's binomial CDF. I'm going to hit enter. If your calculator just has binomial CDF and then the parenthesis, don't worry, my next screen will look exactly like yours. But if yours looks like mine, I'm going to go ahead and type in. It looks like I've got just about everything there, don't I? 50 trials, P is 0 0.08. But my X value for the cumulative probability, which is cases, this is going to be 0 up to a number. So I want 0 up to 2 is my max number of cases. Oh, I don't want a parenthesis there. And then I go ahead and hit Enter. This is what your calculator will look like if you didn't have the menu prompts. So I'm going to use the um, a comma, which is right above the number 7, to put those parameters into the function. 50.08 and then 2 is up to. Um, let's go ahead and hit enter. Yeah, a pretty decent probability. 22.6% is my probability there. Let's go ahead and put that up here. Um, this is going to be 50 comma 0 0.08 comma 2 and this is about 
22.6%. So a pretty decent probability. And then remember that that number on the end here with this formula is zero up two X. And the number that we type in here is equal to X. Okay, so about 22.6. If you were to type all of the cases in like I've got up above, you'll get the very same thing. Next, let's do an at least example. But before we do, take just a second to click the like button if this video is helpful for you. The more people that click like, the more people get to see this video. I also encourage any questions or comments that you've got from me, I'd love to hear from you. Let's go ahead and dive into that at least example. I'm gonna move over to my next screen here. And let's go ahead and put down those parameters so we've got all of the information that we need. So P, which is the probability of a success, is 0.08. Q, which is the probability of a failure, is 0.92. And we've got N at 50 trials. We're going to do an at least example this time. So I want the probability that we get at least 10 out of the 50 defective batteries. These are a lot of cases because I end up with 10 could be defective or 11 or 12 or do you get the idea all the way up to 50. I would need a binomial probability formula for each of these. I don't want to do it that way. So instead, I want to use my binomial CDF. But remember that binomial CDF used zero binom CDF. Uh, let's see, 50 trials, I can leave that. 0 0.08, I can leave that. But the number that goes here was zero up two. So if I think of these cases, which are all of my possible outcomes along this kind of crooked continuum, I could get anywhere from zero to 50 defective batteries. I want this group here, 10, 11, 12, and so on. That's the group that I want. If that's the group that I want, but I've got to do zero up to, I'm going to put these in yellow, but the calculator wants zero up to a number, I can go ahead and put in the ones that I don't want. What I don't want is anything up through nine. I want to start at zero. So anything up through nine, I don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and let X equal nine, but I want to make sure I'm getting the correct probability. The sum of the probability of all of the possible outcomes is equal to one or a hundred percent. So if I take away the ones that I don't want, so one minus the binomial CDF of what I don't want, I end up with what I do want. So I'm going to take away 50 comma 0 0.08. I'm going to take away those cases up through nine. And that's going to leave me with the probability that I was looking for 10 up to 50. OK, so now we've got it outlined. I'm going to take one for these at least one minus the cases I don't want. Let's put this into the calculator. So I've got my calculator. Let me clear what I have. I want one minus the cases I don't want. I'm going to go to second distribution, grab my binomial CDF. So I've got my binomial CDF there, um, still 50 trials, still 0 0.08, but I want to get zero up to nine out of there. So I'm going to do, I'm going to put nine in for my X and then enter and then enter. So I've got a really small probability. Well, think about it. 8% of 50 is just four batteries. We were asking for the probability that 10 or more, that would be a lot, 10 or more, I was expecting much, much less. So we have a 0.56% chance, a very, very small probability. So this is equal to, I should say about, because I'm rounding, um, 0.56%. Now hang on, because I've got a much easier way to do these. I'm going to use Desmos, a completely free graphing calculator program. So I'm here in Desmos. I'm just in the graphing calculator and I have clicked on the keyboard. Let me click on it again so you can see where I'm at. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on the keyboard. I'm looking for the binomial CDF distribution. I go into functions, distribution, and there's my binomial distribution. It's gonna ask me some information about that distribution. Trials, I've got 50 trials. And then comma, 
So I'm just following what it reads, what it's asking me for, for the parameters below that. Um, the success probability is 0.08. Right. Now, what I've got, if I click on this zoom fit here, what I have is the distribution. Take a look there at four. That has my highest probability. Okay, that's cool. But what I really want, which is even cooler, is to figure out my cumulative probability. So I'm going to go ahead and check this one. So if I go to my first example, this one was at most two defective. So I wanted zero, one, or two. Zero was the minimum that I wanted. Two was the maximum. So back over to Desmos, for that minimum, I do want zero. For the maximum, I want two. And I go ahead and hit enter. I don't even hit enter. There it is, 22.6%. Um, Super easy. If I do the next one, so let me go back to our at least example. This one was at least 10. So that would be 10 is my minimum, 50 is my maximum. Back over here to Desmos. So let's change that minimum to 10. And the maximum is going to be 50. As soon as I type that 50 in, there's the probability that I wanted. Um, a really super easy way. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching.